Hey, it's Eric W. Powell. It's kind of weird saying W in the middle of my name because I've never done that, but I've realized that there are way too many Eric Powells and it's hard to find me on the internet. So maybe this will help a little bit with that. But this channel is all about personal finance. I want to do nothing more than to educate you on personal finance. I've had a crazy journey when it comes to finances myself. Started as a firefighter, then uh, ended up in the financial industry as a fiduciary financial advisor, but it took me to some time to get there. And with that today, I want to talk about something really interesting. And that is, is a financial advisor worth it? Because I'm going to give you my perspective as from a firefighter perspective when I was talking with financial advisors, and then I'm going to fast forward to more of my perspective as a fiduciary financial advisor and what I've seen in the industry as a whole to make sure that you understand that and you're educated when you're going to look for a financial advisor or to hire one or even to fire one because you need to know what is going to be best for you. I want to jump into some research that talks about this and really share everything. and. So the first thing I wanna talk about though when it comes to this before I really dive into everything is I want you to think about a gym membership and a personal trainer at the gym. Because if you really think about a good financial advisor, a good financial advisor is going to be able to be that personal trainer when you are at the gym. They're gonna be able to encourage you when things aren't going well, they can push you past your limits. They're going to be able to coach you, guide you, all of the things that a good personal trainer would do are the same things that a good advisor will do. On the flip side of that, if you have a bad personal trainer at the gym, they're going to not help you. They could actually hurt you. They could harm you. And so you have to make sure that you are going with the right financial advisor. And so that takes me to where I was with the fire department. I had actually met with an advisor when I was 21 years old. Um, I had actually had some things going on in my personal life as well that I went to go get some life insurance and they tried to sell me a whole life policy. The whole life policy because of the personal things going on in my life ended up being an extensive amount more than it should have been. And the advisor never asked me anything to do with my personal finances. Did I have an emergency reserve set aside? Um, you know, anything about that. All they wanted to know was how much I was making, how much I could afford. That in itself is just the idea of a bad advisor. Um, I'm very leery to tell anybody to go and talk with any kind of financial advisor that gets paid from a commission perspective in any way, shape, or form. You have to take this with caution because if you're going out there and you're trying to find a financial advisor and they have any incentive to sell you, that means that they aren't working in your best interest at all times. Now, there's always conflicts. A fiduciary financial advisor is still going to have a conflict because they want to manage as much money as possible. If you are wanting to roll over your 401k, they're wanting to get the entire balance of that 401k rolled over so that they can make more money charging a fee to do that. So just know that I'm very open about this. I want to share with you and educate you on this, but I wanna go ahead and jump into a bit more of the research because there's a lot that's out here that is talking about financial advisors and I wanted to kind of lay out the foundation first of a good versus a bad one. So the first research that I found, this is at thinkadvisor.com. Now this is based on a, let's go up here and look at Russell's Investments uh, this is something that they reported, and this was from October 16th of 2020. So pretty recent. Uh, the financial advisors deliver value of 5.2%. Let me stop this ad so it's not going to distract us there. Uh, financial advisors deliver value of 5.2% annually or more to their clients. So that's a really high amount of value, 5.2%. Now, if a, an advisor is charging you 1% to manage your money, then 5.2% is definitely worth it. But that's not always the case. You really have to be cautious with this. And you know, a lot of people can do the trading on their own, and I'm not opposed to doing that. I have a lot of clients that actually do trading on their own, and then also I manage more of their retirement and their long-term slow, steady growth and uh, wealth building. So that's what you have to look at. If you haven't yet, please be sure to like and subscribe and put your comment down below. I mean, do you think an advisor is worth it or not? So let's scroll down here and actually look at what this one says. And so the formula for, for this uh, Russell study says that A is for appropriate asset allocation, helping clients to work through their values, preferences, and motivations from the outset. So as far as asset allocation, goes, values go. What that means is that an advisor should be sitting down with you talking about how to align your finances, finding out your goals, your values, and really putting that into play. 
Sometimes it's easier to talk that through with somebody versus just doing it all on your own because sometimes when you're on your own, you have a one-track mind. Um, and so it's easier sometimes to have just that third-party input and especially if you're married. Um, what I found is meeting with people when they are married, sometimes values aren't the same in the marriage when it comes to finances. And having that third-party input is oftentimes a, a great way to help you and guide you on that. So now for the other one, it's uh, B is for behavioral mistakes. Clients help clients avoid behavioral tendencies, may help them achieve better portfolio returns than those investors making decisions without professional guidance. This one's pretty easy if you ask me because I see this every day. Uh, a, the market goes up and down. And if a client is not, uh, or if they have any concerns with the stock markets, it's my ultimate goal to provide some sort of comfort and education and share with them that, look, things are going to go up and down. But when things get bad, a lot of clients do tend to want to pull out of the market or just people in general. That's just the behavior of investing. And that's the wrong time to do it. Instead, what we should be looking at is taking extra cash and buying into the markets. Again, that's where that personal trainer mentality kind of comes in. And when you're having a bad day or the markets are bad, we're encouraging you to do more, do more, push yourself. You can get through this. Same concept here. C is for cost of cash. Uh, advisors can help clients invest in a well diversified portfolio. I have seen way too many people that have a lot of cash that are sitting around. And I mean, I literally met with somebody one time that said they want to keep a minimum of $250,000 in their bank account. And I was like, why, why would you do that? And they're like, well, that's just comfortable for me. And I said, well, what are your expenses throughout the year? Like an annual uh, expense for you. Their annual expenses were about $40,000. So that's a ton of money that is being left aside. And, and due to inflation, that money is actually being eaten up. So we want to make sure that you have cash reserves, but not an excessive amount to the point where you're going to actually lose money. E is for expertise. Quality financial advice goes way beyond the common misconception that financial advisors are purely investment managers whose only job is to select investments and achieve a certain level of return. So as far as expertise goes, that's a big one. Um, you can meet with a, a financial advisor who doesn't have expertise. They haven't worked with a lot of people. They haven't went through a lot of scenarios or some advisors are just they, they just want to they want to do things. But you have to find somebody who really, I feel, thinks outside of the box because if you just go to somebody that's going to tell you, well, do the same thing you're doing, that's fine. But my ultimate goal is to present out of the box ideas sometimes. Um, you know, if you're doing a financial plan for somebody, maybe you can say, well, yeah, just keep doing this and that's fine. But a true financial planner is going to actually look at this from all angles and start talking with you about other opportunities. Well, what if you saved a little bit more? What if you did this a little bit different? Should you pay down your house now or should you just continue to pay the payment and let it ride? All different kind of scenarios where you want to lean on somebody's expertise that they can actually talk you through that. Um, T is for tax effective investing. Um, this is a big one, especially when you get to retirement. It's not as much, there is a lot when it's early on, but in retirement, what we can actually look at is converting money over from tax deferred accounts to Roth accounts. That's a huge potential when you retire, when your income goes down to do that and take advantage of those opportunities. When you were young though, there's also opportunities as well when it comes to this, because what you want to end up doing is looking at accounts that are going to be tax effective for you. Sometimes putting it in a tax deferred account is better. It really is though everybody is preaching the Roth IRA and I love Roth IRAs and I love for Roth 401ks though sometimes if you project or you know your income is going to fall off. I actually just talked to somebody the other day. They're making crazy money right this minute, but they're looking at slowing down in the next three years. And when they do slow down, the contracts are going to end. They just want to pump enough money away to be comfortable the rest of their life. They're not worried about making a certain amount of money later on. They just want to make just enough. So with that, if their income is going to drop, why would I tell them to do everything in a Roth account? It shouldn't all be done in Roth because it's not going to make sense for their situation. So this is, again is something that an advisor should be looking at with you. So now that I've went through this one, this is more of the Russell's. Uh, like I say, it's on Think Advisor. I'll put the link below if you want to check that out. Here's a really interesting one. This is Michael Kitsis. He talks about advisors here and with his, um, you know, the value of an advisor, the hi hierarchy of the value of a financial advisor 
of the value a financial advisor provides. So what's really cool is if you go down here, there's there's this little comic strip and it says, I'll manage your portfolio for a standard industry fee of 1%. Well, I'm investing a billion dollars. Would you, Your fee would be $10 million per year. Those index funds are going, go, aren't going going to pick themselves. Some advisors look at it this way. And if your advisor looks at it this way, it's not always the best case to have that advisor because maybe that advisor is not providing value to you. If they're just picking your funds for you, not having conversations with you, not making sure that you're on track, not making sure that you're hitting your goals, then what exactly are they doing? Because if you just wanna pick index funds, you can do that yourself. But if you really want somebody that's going to, to be there for that expertise, then that's a whole different situation. And so if you come down here, uh, another one that it really shows is this cool pyramid. And I love this because the thing about it is, is the foundation is encouraging consistent and increased savings. Again, it goes back to the same thing I was talking about with a personal trainer. They're going to encourage you as an advisor for consistent and increased savings and then investing, same thing. Hey, you know, make sure that you're investing more. We want to make sure that you're on track for your goals. And then financial planning. This is big. If you have advisors that aren't providing financial planning, then is the financial advisor really worth it? That's a tough one. If, if you like to handle your own investments, but you need financial planning uh, or you want that third party, you may consider hiring a financial advisor. And some of them are even the type that just do planning for you. They won't do actual money management. So look for that if, if you just want the planning side of it. Um, managing expectations and behavior. This is the big one uh, I truly feel, and I know it's up here a little bit in the pyramid, but again, it goes back to the other report as well. So um, I won't go, go over it again, but that's a big one. Asset allocation, managing cost and fees, portfolio rebalancing. Honestly, there's software that's out there now that can do that for you if you just want portfolio rebalancing. Though if you don't understand it, be cautious with it. I know the software that I use, um, it has tax loss harvesting. So that's a big thing when it comes to individual accounts. And then you have your security selection, what you're actually investing in. I mean, Warren Buffett said it, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, just buy the S&P 500. And honestly, that's not, not a bad tip for Warren Buffett. I mean, he's one of the wealthiest guys out there and he obviously knows about investing. Um, so if you're doing it on your own, try to be careful with all of this. Uh, the biggest thing I think doing it on your own is, is being a self-motivator to put the money away and to have, uh, you know, be able to really control your own behavior and expectations. So then Vanguard also put out a report. Now Vanguard's report is interesting because Vanguard's report here, if we go down, it actually talks about a breakdown. Uh, the range of potential value added is 3%. Now it talks about it in basis points and what basis points are is basically it's financial lingo. Um, what that comes down to is if you look here at this, this report, it shows your spending strategy or withdrawal order is zero to 110 basis points. 110 basis points means 1.10%. Asset allocation, zero to 0.7 or to 75, that's 0.75 of a percent or three quarters of a percent. So that's how the basis points works. So if you're looking at this chart here though, uh, the spending strategy is going to be big, especially when you are retired, the withdrawal order, which accounts to pull from first versus last. Um, that's a big one. Uh, we do a lot with that with planning with retired clients. And then we have asset allocation. That's where you're really investing based on your comfort level, what's going to work for you and what is needed. Because sometimes what you want may not be what is necessary. And we even look at the risk mitigation with that because why take extra risk if you don't need to? Um, behavioral coaching, again, that's the one that was in the other one. I mean, it's it's 150 basis points or one and a half percent. So if you're paying an advisor 1%, just that one and a half percent right there is actually putting you in the money per se. So if you look at it there, rebalancing, cost effective implementation, uh, like expense ratios. This one, Vanguard puts that in there and, and I'm, I'm all about saving money on fees when it comes to investing, but sometimes funds tend to perform better if, if they have a higher fee. So sometimes there's a wash there. I can make a whole nother video on that. Tell me if you want to below, I'd be happy to go through that with you. So here's the report there. They also have a breakdown of, of a bit of this, you know, all the information. So I'm going to put all of these reports down below in the description. But when it comes to financial advice and is a financial advisor really worth it, it's great to look at these reports and really study this and think about yourself and your personal situation. Because if you are a self-motivated person and you can invest and you can control the behaviors 
and you are aware of how the market works and are comfortable buying into funds, then you may not need an advisor. But at the same time, if you want somebody that's going to be there for you, that's where a good advisor comes in. Now, if if it's just a robo advisor, they're really not providing value to you other than just picking the portfolio and doing the rebalancing. Yes, there is some value if you look at the Vanguard report with that, but it's not near as much as, as a wealth management advisor. So if you want somebody to guide you and, and go along with you on the ride, go to thefuturemill.com. We have zero minimums. Uh, how it works is we have a subscription and then we also charge a fee for the money management as you progress. But it's all about human interaction and being able to actually provide that value. So I'm happy to do that for you. If you have an interest, you can book a call with us. We'll answer questions for you. But if not, um, be sure to let me know below which type of things that you want me to make videos on because I want to make sure that I am providing value to you even through YouTube. So thank you for watching. If you've not yet, please be sure to like and subscribe.